Greetings, everyone. Mario Blandini here at IX, and I'm joined for a discussion today by Alan Jude, who is with Claris Systems. How are you doing, Alan? I'm doing good. Awesome. Well, uh, our companies uh, love open source, and we're going to get into a discussion uh, not only about how to get support services from Clara, which your company does, but talk a little bit about open source in general, because uh, I assume that you believe this is a good time for folks to be considering this as data storage is growing like crazy, but budgets and certainly supplies and lead times <laughs> make that really tough, right? Yeah. And just, you know, open source gives you so many more options to do it the way you want to do it. How about more specifically, where uh, someone who is using TrueNAS, but is using the open source version uh, and not buying equipment from IX, how is it that you can uh, specifically help those folks that might be looking for that same kind of support from IX, but we don't offer it uh, outside of our product line? Yeah. So Clara provides uh, a subscription support service uh, for ZFS. Uh, on any platform. Uh, and with that, you get access to expertise, whether it's just asking for advice and information on best practices, uh, or being like, I'm having this problem, help me solve it. Or, you know, I have this operation that needs to be done, but, you know, it's sensitive, it needs to be done right. We don't want to lose the data. Can you come and do it for us? Uh, and all of that, and making sure that, you know, we've seen people run into problems where, you know, they set up their ZFS and it's running, but if no one's taking care of it, it eventually, you know, it, there's care and feeding that needs to be done. Otherwise, things can go pretty badly. So we have customers span the thing from, you know, not very enterprisey all the way to extremely enterprisey. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they need something a little different than what you get out of out of the box packaged appliance. You know, they True. need to customize it for a certain use case, or they need to build it a different way, uh, or they just have needs that that. You know other things that have to be able to run on the box or regulatory compliance or whatever it might be, yeah. and we can help them do that. And then, as you mentioned, we also do uh, customizing work. So we've had companies that's like, "There's this feature ZFS doesn't have, and we need it to have. Uh, can you build it for us and help us get that into upstream so that it'll be available in the future for everyone, and mostly so that they don't have the problem of trying to maintain that fork mm -hmm. of ZFS because ZFS, you know." Well, I wouldn't say it's especially fast moving. You know, it very quickly uh, your technical debt adds up if you don't keep your version of ZFS up to date. There's really two th uh, ways people can think of you. Um, the first level is uh, if you're you need development support or you need support for uh, non-development, but for some sort of uh, application use. And when going down that road, the application could be either more development for features or some other customizations or just plain old support, right? If you're, they're looking for that. So how, how do you think TrueNAS works? I mean, you're, you're, you work with lots of different stuff. TrueNAS in general, where do you think its maturity is? Because it's been around for a long time and we've got now uh, TrueNAS scale, which is new mm -hmm. uh, as of this year and um, uh, version 13, which is uh, in its uh, U1 release now and is uh, going to U2. I just was wondering if you had uh, an opinion on TrueNAS, looking at lots of different open source projects. Yeah, and looking at the deployments we see, most of the time TrueNAS is picked because uh, it's so popular and because it provides that graphical interface uh, right. enough that you can do most of the operations without having to know the deep internals of ZFS or, or do everything from the command line. Uh, and that gives the power of this open source storage to a lot more people than if the only way to get it was, you know, vanilla ZFS on Linux or, or ZFS on FreeBSD, and you had to kind of put all the pieces together yourself. Yeah, I, I think most folks aren't into science projects like that, at least from an IT perspective. Uh, certainly, uh, anyone who is a developer, open source, TrueNAS is the uh, culmination of several uh, bits of open source into a turnkey product. And so uh, that's a uh, good thing. When it comes to, um, infrastructure, right? That folks who are coming together and putting these, uh, maybe using old equipment um, or purchasing new equipment, what are your recommendations then in terms of uh, hardware? Because oftentimes I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, people are trying to leverage existing decommissioned hardware and that may make for a little bit more problematic of a deployment, right? Because 
uh, you know, the more uh, variables there, uh, the harder it is to put together. What's your experience been there um, around uh, the types of hardware people are using and um, whether or not the old stuff works? Because <laughs> naturally, yeah. anything uh, newer from a hardware perspective is going to go faster. But TrueNAS runs on anything to include a lot of older equipment. I'd, I'd love your opinion on uh, how people are choosing their hardware. A lot of the new deployments we deal with, and especially the consulting we do to help people decide how to build stuff, is mostly new. Uh, but even there, you know, there's a lot of options now with, you know, how you can use SSDs to accelerate hard drive-based pools by having, mm -hmm. you know, the metadata VDEVs and just what combination actually makes sense and and spending the money smartly, because uh, you know you can spend lots of money on SSDs and then not use them well and not get the advantage of it. Sure thing. Um, and then. You know, you see the same thing with people, you know, repurposing older hardware is is fine as long as it's not too old. You know, with storage in the end, hard drives are hard drives and, and it's it's generally been okay. Yeah. I've seen well, a, a couple of different styles of deployment, and but all mm -hmm. of it seems to, you know, TrueNAS works with all of it. When we build our own infrastructure here, we often are using IX partly because knowing that when the system arrives, it, all the hard drives have already been burned in, tested, and that we got stuff that's that's not going to be DOA immediately, or you know the you know first couple of hours of the hard drive being powered on is when it's most likely to to have problems. Mm -hmm. The fact that you guys have dealt with all that for me ahead of time has made all those deployments a lot smoother. Let's use that as a segue to talk more about open source in general, because I I think, Alan, that it's not a really tough argument to say that open source, let's just say, seeping into and playing a major role in layers of the data center is just a historic norm. You can pick yeah. it from databases to operating systems to whatever that might be. When all technologies at first, people say, oh, that's never going to work. It's never going to be good enough. I mean, people said that about a lot of stuff. Linux, pff, never going to be good enough. But uh, I think they were looking at it from a different point of view. You having seen all these things, you know, uh, pass, I assume that you agree that open, it's inevitable that open technology will find its way into pieces of the data center stack where it can add value and do just as good, if not a better job than stuff that you'd otherwise pay for. Yeah, and we've seen it, like you said, very gradually, starting with you know databases, things like Postgres supplanting Oracle, mm -hmm. uh, but then it became the operating system, and now we're even seeing it getting into lower parts of the network, like the switches running open source yeah. software, uh, and getting more and more the entire data center stack moving to open source, because it gives you that extra flexibility to mix and match better, or to customize where you need to, or even just to have that certainty that it's not going to really disappear from under you. Right? Uh, There's always yes. the option to keep it going uh, or to to work with other people that are using it and and collectively get those benefits versus being you know captured by a vendor. Let me go ahead and ask you, um, do you believe the open storage era is inevitable? Yes. Whether it's things like TrueNAS getting the first open source foothold in like all Microsoft shops, uh, whether it's as a file server or the the backing for Hyper-V or VMware or whatever, uh, we've done plenty of deployments that way where it was the first non-Microsoft thing getting deployed at this enterprise. And, it, you know, that foot in the door, and then suddenly there's more and more open source coming um, through to places where, you know, most of the stack is open source. And it's like, well, when it's time to lifecycle this stuff, why are we going to keep this one not open source component when we've found that, these open source components work better in every way. Uh, so we've definitely seen more and more of that. And especially with storage, when we're starting to look at, you know, thinking longer term, you don't want your storage to be captive. You know, uh, thinking when you get, you know, you're talking about hundreds of terabytes or petabytes of data, transferring that to something else is suddenly a, a huge burden. Whereas if it's based on something open source, that means you can always you know, still mount that file system. It's not something proprietary that you're going to have to migrate from. It's something open that you can continue to access no matter what. So the question I have for you is, is it still too risky for people to consider it? I, I could say from TrueNAS downloaders and people who buy the IX solutions from IX, they're finding that it works every bit as good as their existing infrastructure, if not better, 
plus all the benefits, like it's lower cost and you have freedom and flexibility to do, you know, certain things and the technology is going to be around forever versus potentially end of life, you know, uh, through uh, some proprietary vendor who's profit first. Yeah, I think specifically we're about reaching that tipping point where it's starting to go the other way, where using something proprietary is increasing your risk. Because if you hit the end of life on that hardware and something fails and you can't get a spare part, how do you access that data? Whereas if it's something open, different hardware will still be able to access that data uh, because you have access to the open software that will be able to import that pool and get your data back, whether it's to migrate it or just to keep it running. Uh, you know, where you've seen things like that, whereas with something proprietary, it can be as much as, you know, if we don't have the exact right RAID controller card to replace, then none of this data is accessible ever. The risk curve is starting to invert to the point where not using open source is increasing your risk because now you're tied to this one vendor and that that one hardware. And it means maybe you get forced into taking their upgrade path sooner because you don't ever want to be in the situation where we're past the end of life and we don't have a way to, to migrate this data off. Whereas with something open, you always have more options. Everybody's got huge amounts of data now. And as more and more people choose something open because it's safer and because it's more cost effective and it gives you more freedom to decide what you want to do with your storage. you know, In the end, all this data is yours and you need to be able to do what you want with it. You've been with uh, you know, working with TrueNAS for a long time. It's gotten a lot better in terms of the out-of-box out of, out of experience, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And and just how quickly you can deploy that versus, you know, the lead time with something from the vendor sometimes. It means that, you know, if you need to migrate a bunch of data really quick, you know, we saw some of this at the start of the pandemic, suddenly we need to move all this data that used to live in our office into the cloud so we have enough bandwidth to push it out to all of our users who are now at home, not in the office. We need to deploy something now. And that was easy to just throw up a, a, a TrueNAS. And now all those files are accessible for all of our users on the VPN without having to worry about, you know, we don't have enough internet at the office. Awesome story. All right, well, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, for the discussion. Alan, any parting thoughts uh, for those who might be interested in speaking with you? What, who are the types of folks uh, we've talked about before, but uh, maybe give a brief recap of the types of folks that um, are what, what a good um, use case is for getting your support subscription for TrueNAS, mm -hmm. you know, what, what that kind of looks like so folks can understand if it looks like them. Uh, and then any other uh, comments you want to make about Clara? Yeah. Uh, so our support subscription provides a block of hours every month that you can use for everything from just asking questions about ZFS and best practices and how to do things through, you know, support when something isn't working the way you want uh, or even proactive stuff. It's like, you know, we want you to come and check on our server every week and make sure things are right and tell us, hey, you know, looking at the trend, you're going to run out of space in a couple of months. Hard drives take a little while, so you want to get that order into IX soon so that you get uh, the drives in time to grow the pool before it becomes critically out of space. And so everything from just advice through proactive uh, support where we're managing it all for you and you don't have to think about it, uh, that fits in our support stuff. And we also do engagements for audits, you know, just, hey, we have this setup that we've had for a while. Can you come check it make sure we're following best practices and things are working right? Or, you know, we're not seeing the performance we'd like or performance has dropped off after this change. Can you come tell us what's going on and, and fix that up? If folks wanted to get a hold of you all directly, how might they best do that? The yeah, best way is just go to clarasystems.com and, and uh, fill out the contact form and tell us what you're looking for and we'll get back to you. That sounds great. Well, thanks a lot, Alan. Um, and I appreciate your time today. Yes, thank you, Mario. And thanks everybody for watching.